What I'm going to do with this video is very quickly run through all of the tone modes in two separate audio output modes that I now have available for the blue box. The older box here uses the uh, tone library that can generate two simultaneous square waves on separate pins that are combined through a resistor. Uh, it sounds a, it's not sinusoidal, so there's a lot of distortion and some uh, inter, and some um, intermodulation distortion that shows up with the telephone earpieces. What I've done on this prototype here, which I haven't put into a box yet, is I've used uh, a different library, a synthesizer library that was designed for um, for music synthesis. And this library has the capability on um, one pin or two pins, depending how it's configured, to generate up to four simultaneous waveforms. And that can be sine wave, triangle wave, ramp, uh, square wave even, if you want to replicate what's on the other one. Uh, and I think there's a noise waveform even. A lot of control. I've got it kind of simplified just for basic tone generation with no envelope shaping or anything else. So I modified this synth uh, package to uh, generate the tones. So the functionality of the two boxes is identical. The only difference is the tone generation capability. This one requires a, the prototype requires a um, low pass filter to filter out the 20 kilohertz sampling frequency. Uh, otherwise it shows up as kind of a buzzing on some of the tones. So what I've done is I've got identical sequences stored in both in all of the tone modes. I'm just going to run through, uh, play one of each, and then you can kind of compare and hear the difference in the sound. So first uh, we'll do the square wave uh, on this box, and then we'll do the sine wave simulation with pulse width modulation on this box. Now sine wave. You can hear the tones sound rounder, and they actually detect better on the MF tones on my Project MF um, um, R1 line simulator running on asterisk. All right, let's just go through the others. Uh, square. That's uh, DTMF. Uh, now we'll do uh, MF again, but this time with uh, C5 uh, seizure. And now uh, sine wave. Square. Sign. Square. Sine wave. Square. Now sine. and sine wave with a slightly different seizure tone. Uh, AC1 square wave. and uh, sine wave. AC9 uh, square wave.
and sine wave. IMTS ANI in square. And uh, in sign. Um, we'll do IM. We'll skip to IMTS um, dialing in uh, square wave. And sine wave. And finally, the old MTS uh, GEC cord dial mode, uh, the old mobile telephone mode pre, um, preceding IMTS in square wave. And sine wave. So that's it. Um, I have both versions of the code on the web link, so uh, feel free to take a look at that. I've got some manuals that cover both. One disadvantage of using the PWM is that um, there's two modes. You can either reference it to ground uh, with a single output pin, um, which uh, in this case is pin 10, which uh, is just above the uh, row of eight pins that are used for the uh, keypad connector. So that allows you to plug them in because you've got eight other pins uh, that are consecutive. You can just plug it directly into the header with this connector on the membrane keypad. Uh, there's a second mode called differential mode that gives twice the volume, twice, twice the voltage swing, and um, if you use that, um, you've got to use two pins, and the way that the PWM output is constrained, you can't get eight consecutive pins on either the uh, micro or the pro micro, so you've got to actually uh, move one of the row pins and jump over one, which makes the wiring a little more difficult. You can't plug directly into the headers, but the added audio volume is well worth it, and um, that gives you a full 5-volt swing if you use the 2-pin output mode on it. The code supports all the modes. You just uncomment the line that, uh, that you're interested in using. So that's it, a comparison of the square wave output um, using the tone library and the sine wave simulated uh, PWM sine wave wavetable lookup mode using the synth uh, tone generation library, identical uh, functionality.